Of course, and I close here. The and Rose and I will be talking about it later. The biggest and most obvious issue is the one that the Labour Conference voted not to discuss, even though it's the biggest issue in the world, even though it's set a fire raging throughout the Muslim world, the flames of which are now lapping at our own feet on the London Underground and on the buses in my own constituency. This Labour Party, which chained itself to George Bush because he was hearing voices, has to hear the voices of the British people. I used to expect a kind of 10-year cycle of vindication. When the sun first called me a traitor, it was nothing to do with Iraq, it was for standing on a platform with Jerry Adams and saying that the Republican movement had to be brought into the political process if a solution was to be found to the Irish conflict. They ran my picture in a big 36-point bold headline, traitor. Within some years, everybody believed that that was right. <laughs> now you can't find anybody except Ian Paisley, and I have the misfortune to sit in front of him. <laughs> now, as I promise, you think it was bad sitting alongside Tony Blair. <laughs> Try sitting in front of Ian Paisley. <laughs> what language for a clergyman, I'll tell you. <laughs> But other than Ian Paisley, there's nobody who disagrees with that now. But I used to expect it would be years before the arguments we were making would become mainstream majority arguments. But I tell you, as someone going around the country now speaking at one or two public meetings every day, you now cannot find anybody in Britain who thinks that the invasion and occupation of Iraq was a good idea. And yet, and yet, the people who took us here, the intelligence chiefs, the members of parliament, the members of government, the editors, the commentators, the columnists, the journalists of the British media, who were as much a part of the invasion as the US Marines were, are all still in their place. The only people to have lost their jobs as a result of this big disaster are Dr. David Kelly, who also lost his life, Andrew Gilligan, who lost his job on the BBC for telling us the truth that Kelly told him, Greg Dyke for backing him, Gavin Davis, the chairman of the BBC, for backing him, and me. We are the only people that lost our jobs in the whole Iraq affair. Although I got another one, a better one. <laughs> I got a better one. <laughs> if democracy means anything, it must mean that political leaders must pay for grotesque blunders and crimes as big as this, or there is no democracy. And the mainstream political system will not hold these leaders to account and the newspapers who back them certainly will not. I signed the appeasement, sorry, the impeachment <laughs> demand of Tony Blair tabled in the House of Commons. But of course it has no chance of passing for it requires the support of the very members of parliament who <coughs> voted for this disaster in the first place. And so it's left to us it's left to the Scottish Socialist Party in Scotland. It's left to respect in England and Wales to appeal to the millions of people embittered, <laughs> angry and disappointed by the mainstream political parties. The attendance at political meetings and demonstrations proves that the people of these islands are not apathetic. 
They are apoplectic at the pathetic nature of the political class that represents them. There's lots of ground for us. There are many people waiting for a lead from us. And I hope over this weekend at your festival here, you can find the answers and find the voice to reach the people who are desperately looking for a lead. Thank you very much indeed.